I'm the kind of guy who, when you give me a toy, I look at the toy and say, hmm, what could I do that's interesting with this? The Digital House. Some fellows at work were working with X10, which is an old, crummy house controller uh, controller system, and they had some extra ones, and I took them home, and I said, hmm, I could have the computer or wall switches control lights in different ways. Let's see what I can do. And so I started doing that, and I bought more and more of them and put them in, and eventually we'd have things like a button I could press by the bed that would turn on and off the outside lights all around the house. Sort of an emergency mode or or something like that. You want to hear a sound, you could turn it on. Or it's bedtime and you want all those lights off, you hit the button. Well, I could get a computer interface and have the computer start doing it. Well, now it could turn the front lights on at dusk and turn them off later. It could turn them off at midnight in case the kids left the lights on in the basement. Um, and so these ideas slowly over the years accumulated into what we call the digital house. It's a different dimension of interacting with your home. It's just not cushions or whether the refrigerator's full. It's that your, your home becomes another um, character in the play of your life. So it wasn't this grand idea of, oh, I want to build this personality that's going to help me run my life. It was, let, let's fiddle with this and sort of tinker and invent and see if we can make our lives better. I'm a technical guy. It's, you know, it's equipment and programs I run. Uh, there's nothing behind the machine. It's a Unix machine with cron jobs and little processes. And they, they break and I have to go fix them. Um, I, you know, I don't give the house a name or anything like that. It's just some computers running various bits of hardware in the house. A lot of people who work on automating or digital homes have sensors on their water heater, gas heater, thermostats, uh, all the utilities to tell when they're on and give them information. You know, how, how much air time were your, was your air conditioner on yesterday? Um, those require specific sensors for each of them, and I've looked into them over the years and never got around to actually installing them and started recording the data. I really should. It would be handy to have that sort of information. Another aspect of all of this is since we have our web server here at home, I can bring some of the home features to a secret web page that I can consult while I'm traveling. We have an intercom in the house. We, I always wanted one as a kid. So I took the intercom and plugged it into the computer. So the computer is the auxiliary input to the intercom. So the computer can now talk to the house. Intercom stays on all the time um, and turned out to be very useful. The space station will be passing overhead in three minutes. Our house announces when the space station is passing overhead. Runs the goes to a web page every night, says space station. And if the space station is passing overhead high enough in the sky, not when we're asleep, then the house will announce it and give a couple minutes warning. Caller ID goes through and announces who's calling. And if it's unidentified, it goes <laughs> but The chime happens at the top of the hour and it happens except in the middle of the night. And at noon, we play Big Ben and uh, you know it's as if you were in London. And uh, if the net is down, it gives a different chime. That is so useful. <laughs> It doesn't announce the internet is up and down and up and down. We tried that. That's obnoxious. You don't want to know when it's up and down. But if it's down, it says chime. And it's still at the top of the hour, but you're, you've got the audio cue of, oh, the internet's down. Maybe I should do something about it. Good morning. Here is what is happening today. When I get up in the morning, I sort of want to know what the weather's going to be and what the news stories were. Um, so it's 7.04 on weekdays, 8.04 Saturday, 9.04 Sunday. Our house has about a one-minute litany. There certainly are other projects that would be fun. For example, a front door monitor. We already have a doorbell that ha has an amusing voice to it. There are children who have never made it inside the house because they stand on the front porch playing with the doorbell. Someone is at the door doorbell talks to them. That was one of the first things we implemented and it's probably one of the last things will we'll change. 
There are some security things I do in the house. I don't want to talk too much about them, but there, there's lots of software out there to do them. I'd like to do more of it. Is the digital home the future of homes? I would hope so, but the way right now there's, there's some assembly required. I mean, I'm an IT guy and you really need an IT guy and a tinkerer to make all of this stuff work. I've often thought that it might be a great idea to have a Microsoft standard house. You know, Microsoft gives a book to a builder and says, do this stuff. And the builder does it, and then you slide the, the computer in and run in Microsoft Home, and suddenly you've got all this stuff. That seems like something that could happen. I don't know if it's Microsoft who would do it. It could be AT&T, could be somebody like that. And I don't know how big the market is, but it seems like an idea that might be pretty interesting.